Despite that there are a lot of former members talking about the unit, their training is still far more secretive than Dev Group. Hi, I'm Kylie Jessner, the Army Vet, and today I'm reacting to a video from U.S. Military News. This is the most secretive unit in the United States. This was made about two years ago, and it has 1.5 million views, so it should be a good one. Let's get to it. Chinook. The most secret unit in the United States Armed Forces. Hello and welcome to the US Military News Channel where we discuss all things military. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell notification if you want to know the latest updates. Thank you. There are some solid answers on a question about the most secret unit and some not so solid answers. In order not to drone on, sounding like a broken record, SEAL Team 6, aka Dev Gru, is not the most secretive. I wouldn't necessarily agree that CAG, Delta Force, etc., is the most secretive in general. This being due to the plenty of interviews we have seen and heard from former members, movies, literature, and all that good stuff. So yes, Navy SEALs are definitely not the most secret unit out there. After all, they've been highly publicized in movies, pop culture, TV, and books. You cannot walk into a bookstore today and not see a biography of a Navy SEAL or a Delta Force or a Green Beret. According to Public Thoughts, the most secret units are by far Delta Force, The Unit, and D-Boys. Nowadays, operating under the U.S. Army Combat Applications Group, CAG has the most security on it, much more than any other unit in the entirety of U.S. SOCOM, except maybe the ISA or Gray Fox. Dev Gru and CAG slash Delta Force. Despite that there are a lot of former members talking about the unit, their training is still far more secretive than Dev Group. For example, CAG has no official uniform. The Pentagon actually forbids it. Delta operators do not get labeled with a typical Army ID and do not wear distinguishing identification in their Army ID photos. They are usually listed as Rangers or Special Forces, which were sometimes their original units. So I don't know if this is true or not, but I did hear that with some of these units, they're so secretive that once they do become an operator, their electronic file, their personnel record is completely sealed. And when they do leave their special operations community, only then will their records become unsealed. So this last one is probably rarer unless it's from the 82nd. Nobody really knows how OTC, the operator training course, is conducted, except former CAG operators themselves, in contrast to DevGru. Seriously, everyone knows about Green Team, Red Squadron, Gold Squadron, and even Black Squadron at this point. It's not secret at all. Most units do all the recruiting in secret. However, the Green Berets are more publicized when it comes to that. They do have these special forces briefings and sessions that are open to anyone on post that want to come find out more about possibly becoming an operator. They tell people that they were telephone operators. Seriously. Colonel Beckwith oh. had his original Delta guys feed people this line, even their families. Didn't go so great when one fed that line to Colonel Beckwith's daughter at a bar, hmm. but that's another tragic story. So Colonel Beckwith is a legend. After working with Britain's SAS, he was inspired to use their model to make his own unit, and that unit was Delta Force. He is the granddaddy of Delta. CIA ISA. The CIA's barely confirmed the existence of their Special Activities Division, or SAD. The CIA is already the most discreet organization in the US. Because of that, their special forces would get equipment not usually provided to regular soldiers and have access to restricted areas. SAD is also made up of retired DevGru and Delta Force operators. They are trained to conduct missions such as sabotage, personnel and material retrieval, kidnapping, 
Kidnapping? Okay. Bomb damage assessment. Hostage rescue. Counterterrorism. It does not matter what country or unit you're from, but most special forces units will actually do some sort of sabotage, hostage rescue, and counterterrorism. And that is mostly what is available about them. No HQ, no commander, no publicly known former operatives, not any confirmed mission they took part in, and so on. The CIA is very secretive. Most people can't even name one mission that they've actually ever done. The only one that I can think of off the top of my head was in the 1970s or 80s, I'm not sure. It was when India was trying to work on its nuclear program and one of its top scientists was flying in a commercial airplane with about 250 other souls and the CIA decided to take that whole plane out just so they can kill that one scientist. Conclusion Secrecy is one of the best currencies in war, so it's sometimes best for commanders to keep their best assets hidden from the enemy and the public. While the military has admitted that most of the units on this list existed at some point, a lot of their missions were classified for decades before being disclosed to the public. For the units that are still operating, America still only gets glimpses into their activities. But to conclude this article, Adebgru is most definitely not the most classified unit in the United States Armed Forces and the United States overall. Neither is the Delta Force, CAG, the unit, or whatever you want to call it. From my perspective, the most secret unit is the CIA's SAD, of course from the list of the units ever mentioned. I cannot speak about units or task forces that were never disclosed to the public. Furthermore, even the Secret Service has special operators. There are special groups within special groups, and none of them are public knowledge. SEAL Team 6 was a completely black book when formed. For decades, no one admitted the group's existence. Decades. And that was decades ago. So one can only imagine what our military and government have now. Oh, nice recovery though. That would have been me. I would have done the same thing. So that yellow thing on the end of his barrel, that's called a blank firing adapter, and that's used when you're firing blanks for safety reasons. So many of these units do change mission profiles, designations, and names just for OPSEC and security purposes, and some of these units are formed because of major events such as 9-11, and that is when Task Force 88, or the Hunter Killer Team, was actually formed. They are made up of personnel from DEVGRU, U.S. Air Force Special Tactics Squadron, Delta, and the 75th Ranger Regiment. Are they still in existence today? I do not know. This reminds me of when I was doing medical coverage for the, it was for the Green Berets in Republic of Georgia right before the Russians invaded in 2008. And I was actually doing medical coverage for the Green Berets as they were teaching the Special Forces of Georgia 
how to do like shoot house and urban ops. And that was a lot of fun. But one thing about the Green Berets is that they had no patches, no insignia, no ranks, and no name tags either. And as soon as Russia invaded Georgia, those guys were nowhere to be found. The police, series. Hey, geez, make sure you call out targets. We never saw them again. But that was some good training, though. I'm glad I got to watch that. Talk about some bad terrain. Ugh. So I would love to get your thoughts in the comments on what you thought of this video. Me personally, I did enjoy it. However, I think it's important for everyone to understand that you need to take this content or this information with a grain of salt. Because after all, the most secretive unit out there is the one that you don't know about. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to watch another video just like this, then here you go. If you want to help support the channel, you can always use a like, sub, share, thanks.